a long, long part of 2020 and 2021, I was on top of my game, popping out Q&A after Q&A almost every month. And then I got a little worse at it. And then I got clapped on August 10th and I stopped making Q&As. <laughs> so here we are, bringing it back again. Welcome back to the last Q&A of 2021. Ooh, let's get started. Smallfly wants me to estimate how many hours I'll put into Splatoon 3. Well, currently in Splatoon 2, I've put about 4,000 or so hours in. <laughs> and I still am not good at everything in the game. So I can imagine that as long as Splatoon 3 still has, like, the weapon variety that Splatoon 2 has, I'll probably end up with at least a few thousand hours in Splatoon 3 as well, and I have no shame. Suki asks, Vic, this is a very important question that must, must, must be answered. Will my hair have a braid in Splatoon 3? It's, it's so tempting, because it's so cute. I would love to be able to, like, draw my inkling with a braid to kind of, like, get that thought down. But at the same time, I'm like, oh no, if I, like, give my inkling a braid actually is, like, the design, then I'd have to, like, redo a whole bunch of art. I'd have to get more commissions with the braid in. So I'll probably keep, uh, I'll probably keep my inkling, like, the same as is. But I'll maybe on occasion give one with the braid, because it's just fun. I'm glad that your inkling gets the braid probably during the single player stuff, too. So I can enjoy it there, at least. And then we got a few funny guys here, doing a little bit of a joke. A little laugh. Talking about Rhydon and Candice and Sugandis. ba 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 Next question! Roblox and Splatoon Gamer asks, does Splatoon ever get boring? Well, the way that I keep it from getting boring is I'm constantly playing different things. You'll notice that whenever I do my private battle streams on Sunday mornings, that I actually don't play the same weapon for more than like one or two games in a row. It's just because the way that I like playing the game is just messing around with lots of different combinations. Does that mean I'm as good at the game as someone who won tricks? No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to be a top player. I'm just here to enjoy the game, learn about it a little bit along the way, and pass some of that fun along to you guys. It's well doing good. Salvi says, what are the top three ways to cook eggs? Uh, scramble them, scramble them, and scramble them. But, I mean, if you don't want to scramble your eggs, you know, putting them into a nice omelet full of meats and things, you know, perfectly good option number two. But I prefer my eggs are scrambled. I want to put them in the pan. I want to let them cook a little bit. You know, pushing them along the pan all the time, of course, right? Right? And then right before they're actually done, when they're still quite a bit runny, take them off the heat. Take the pan. Put it aside. Let them finish cooking on the pan. Throw them on the plate. Bam. Still nice, still soft, still a little bit moist. Good scrambled eggs. What's an everyday object that you would like to see get added in Splatoon 3 as a weapon, asks Delusional. And honestly, I think it'd be really funny to have like a pasta strainer. <laughs> like instead of like a bucket, make it a bucket class weapon, right? But what it does is you just have a very like large radius of effect, like, like wider than the tri slosher. And maybe it doesn't do a ton of damage, but, you know, you just have like little strings of ink that you see in the air. I think it'd be cute. Doc asks, what's the best game that you first played or beat on stream? Hmm, if we're sticking to games that I only played this year, it would probably end up being Metopia. Oh my god, the Metopia experience. Even if I didn't make as many videos as planned on Metopia, I don't think any game surprised me with its entertainment value as much as Metopia did. Like, I knew it was a classic, I knew people loved it from the DS days, but I didn't know it was gonna be so good. God, if I could, like, erase my memories and play that again, I would love to do that. Play Metopia. I'm Back asks if my 2021 was a good year or a bad year. Well, as I mentioned earlier, this was the year that I finally fixed my dang face. And I'll be expanding upon that in a proper, like, personal essay style video coming out sooner than you think. <laughs> so, I mean, that automatically made the year great. I've been feeling a lot better recently, and I am genuinely happy with where I am right now, for the most part. There's been a lot of good and bad that happened otherwise, though, this year. But I would like to hope that the good has outweighed the bad. 
And I'm really excited for where 2022 might take us. Not just about the channel, but just like life in general. I'm happy with my job. I am saving money, Yahoo. Uh, people are very nice to me online and I really couldn't ask for more than that, woo! Okay, these ones were back to back and I'm not sure why. And I also got like another one of these like like a few hours ago before I recorded this where people are just asking me if I like cheese. And I'm not sure if this is some kind of like trick or not, but top two cheeses for me are provolone, goes great on any sandwich you get at Subway, and Gouda. Those are, those are top two cheeses. And then maybe after that, like a nice port wine cheese to go on your crackers. But I don't have crackers often enough to enjoy port wine cheese with them. But those are, those are three. Three really good cheeses. Mwah. Mateus asks, how did Vic start working for Sheldon? Well, when I started to build up my character working at Sheldon's, I, I really didn't have much thought of it at the time besides like, oh hey, I wanna, I wanna be like the Billy Mays of Splatoon. So I binge watched a bunch of my favorite like garbagey infomercials and I was like, yeah, I could, I could, I could probably do that. And uh, bada bing bada boom, I made an ad video and I hated it. <laughs> I think I made first the one for the Rapid Blaster or something like that. And I chucked the script because I thought it was stupid and no one wanna watch that. So I put it aside, didn't think about it for a while. And then Nintendo dropped those brand new weapons, the blob lobber and all those. And I thought to myself, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no this time. I'm gonna make a script, I'm gonna write an ad, I'm gonna put it out, I'm gonna see what people think about it. And then it outperformed almost every other video I have on the channel. So I was like, oh, people, people really like this, huh? It was really funny because when I went to Atlanta a little while later, like maybe at the end of the month, some people only knew me because of that particular video. And I was like, oh. I didn't really intend on the ads being like a running thing, but as soon as I saw that people genuinely liked them, I'm like, oh good, I can use my comedy skills for something. Then after that, I started to carve my way into giving my inkling more personality, naming her slushy, throwing her at Sheldon's, and building up from there. There's lots of little jokes and stuff amongst all the ads that I'm really happy about, and I'm excited to make more of them in the future. Silver asks, do I consider myself famous? Now, this is a loaded question, so in the Splatoon sphere, yeah, a lot of people know who I am. But in the general scope of YouTube, outside of like Nintendo games especially, people, people don't know who I am, and that's fine. I guess that makes me just niche famous, and I'm cool with that. I love this community so much. Aura asks, am I dead inside? I hope not, I think. I think it's all working in there. Octo Octo asks, do I like mangoes? Uh, I am highly allergic to mangoes. It won't kill me, but I'll get hives like everywhere. <laughs> so no, I, I can't enjoy them anymore, but they are delicious. And I can eat mango flavored things like mango high chews. Fantastic. Mr. Toonlank asks for a Q&A, if Judd or Little Judd became gamers and joined in on a turf war, what would their weapons of choice be? Alright, alright, alright. I just want to give the excuse to give them both slasher class weapons because I'm biased, but I'm thinking that Judd takes like the OG fancy blob lobber. It's got his color scheme, it's fun, it's silly, it paints a lot, and we know how much those cats care about covering all that turf, or at least like counting the turf, I could say. But I think that Lil Judd just goes like full on degenerate and just goes straight to try slosher just, just right away. Causes a big old mess and he's proud of it. Fast sloshes, two hit kill, gross. Lil Judd would be proud. He'd be smiling, that cute little smile that he does. He'd know what he did. Since that he says, what weapon kit would you want to see the most in Splatoon 3 provided what we've seen from the last two trailers of the game? Well, uh, we know that we have the sloshing machine. And we know that we have the crab. If the sloshing machine gets the crab or the killer whale, I would be a very happy camper. They will never give the sloshing machine a burst bomb. No matter how much I like beg for it, it will, it will never happen. But I mean, in this hypothetical situation, we could possibly get it. Or, you know, Nintendo, you could always just let us pick any sub or special that we want inside of PBs. Wink, wink. 
Wink, it would make your game a lot more fun and a lot have a lot more options, please. <laughs> Trash Panda asks, do you have any advice for aspiring Splatubers? I want to make it very clear that it's never too late to get into Splatoon content. I can tell you right now that the algorithm is preferring shorts, so it doesn't hurt to include some shorts in your content every once in a while. But if you want to be a Splatuber, just start making Splatoon content. In my eyes, anybody that makes consistently and most often Splatoon content is a Splatuber. So it doesn't matter if you have 10 subs or like 10,000 subs. You can still be a Splatuber. Good on you. If you want to get into streaming, try streaming alongside some of your friends. That way you don't have to try and carry four hours of airtime all by yourself. It's also not necessary to stream for four hours straight like I do. You can always do something simple like, uh, you know, playing in some ranked mode for a whole rotation and see what happens. Don't be afraid to be silly and don't be afraid to interact with the people that come to talk to you in your stream. Also, if you happen to be good at the game, don't be afraid to talk about the game. People want to hear your thoughts about Splatoon. That's why they stick around. Kiwi asks, how do you feel about Miitopia? Oops, I, I hit this one up a little bit a while ago, but oh my god, Miitopia is so good. I, I love the Mii Maker. It's dumb. I love seeing other people's creations on the Mii Maker. The storyline is like fun and silly, and it's actually a game that has like a lot to it. I don't even imagine how long it's going to take for me to get all the achievements, or even if I will ever get all the achievements. But it just made me happy to see how much was in the game. I kind of went into it being like, oh, is this going to be like a like a 10 hour thing or something? But no, 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 it, <laughs> it takes a good while. And that makes me real happy, honestly. Matt says, hey Vic, are you ever going to... <laughs> Jess asks, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I got a question, Vic. Are you ready for Camp Triggerfish's glorious return for a third Splatoon game? Next question, Blue asks, how do you speed run getting orange juice? You take an orange, or maybe in my case, you take a clementine, you open it up, you have all the little pieces of orange just, just there, right? Tinkle them into a cup and just go to town. Destruction. <laughs> And before you know it, you might have like a piddling puddle of orange juice in there. Is that good enough? You know, now I'm curious. I want to know like how many oranges go into a glass of orange juice. Just want to know. It says you need about four oranges to make yourself a singular glass of orange juice. But this can vary. Be prepared to need between three and six if they're not the juiciest of oranges. Oh my god. I'm just gonna go to the store. <laughs> Tia asks, how do you like your pizza? In a milkshake? You know, pizza in a milkshake? I give it like a 4 out of 10. It was decent. <laughs> but if I'm eating my pizza normally, I'm just a sucker for a classic pepperon. I enjoy a good old pepperoon. Just pepperoni pizza. Delicious. More toppings, the better. And yes, I will eat the pineapple pizza. I said it here. Ultra says, what the heck was my strategy to make videos when I was in school? Mm, well, I started my YouTube channel while I was still in graduate school. I started my channel in March 2017, and at that time, I hadn't started grad classes yet, but I was already confirmed to be starting them in the fall. And then I didn't finish graduate school until about May of 2019. In that period of time, I started the channel... I had started doing the guides, I started doing the ads, or well, I was close to starting to do the ads. No, no, they were, they were started already, yeah. And basically, uh, I had a lot to do in not enough time. Usually what I would do is I would play games at night with my teammates to get a ton of footage. I would write my scripts during the day in class, or, you know, before class ideally, but sometimes in class, I'll be honest. <laughs> And then I would spend obscene amounts of time between classes just cutting everything together to dump it onto YouTube. Some of my videos would come out at very random times, like I'd throw out a random dictionary at like 7 o'clock at night, and I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, you know what, video is done, gotta put it out. Doesn't matter if it's the wrong time, just gotta put it out. And honestly, luckily for me, YouTube didn't care. It pushed my content very lovingly to everybody, and I'm very thankful for that. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, I didn't do too much besides basically work, YouTube, college, and eat. That was most of my days. Oops. 
Zyf asks, would you rather go against a team of rollers with any charger or a team of undercover Sorella Brellas with a dynamo of your choice? Now you might be thinking to yourself, why the heck would you ever pick the dynamo option? But, but the dynamo roller happens to one-shot ballers. And you know what all those Sorella Brellas have? Baller? So yeah, I just get rid of their special and then I destroy their shields and then they die. Woohoo! BCF says, what was the thought process behind making the Toad Tunes channel? Yay! Every single Friday, all 2022, we're making a bunch of Toad Tunes! I'm just gonna upload a bunch of Toad covers, it's fun. What a better way to be able to troll your friends than to have like an unlimited number of Toad Tunes at your disposal. <laughs> I decided that I didn't want to wait any longer for catalysts for reasons to make toad songs, so I became my own catalyst. Hopefully it works out. Even if it doesn't, god, I'm gonna have fun along the way. Gaming asks, Hey Vic, my idea is what kind of method of traversal in Splatoon would you like to see? I think it'd be kind of funny if we could do a little bit of a suspension of disbelief type thing and let the inkling travel inside of one of the bubbles that we have from a bubble blower and just let us float off into the abyss. Like, you know, just, just away, off into another part of a single player level. Oh, there I go. Michael asks, will Q&As ever return to their monthly schedule, or is that reality a honkin' pipe dream? I think what I'm gonna do from this point out is we're gonna make the Q&As every other month instead of every single month. That way we have more, you know, time between the Q&As, and it makes every single one feel more special. But I'll make sure we still do them next year. Speaking of next year, also, Happy New Year! You might be listening to this video right before New Year's, or maybe you're listening to it sometime after. Regardless of whether you're in 2021, 2022, or even watching this video, like, a stupidly long amount of time into the future, if you are, let me know in the comments when you're watching this. <laughs> I hope that you have a lovely year, whatever it may be, and I hope that just things keep going well for you. I'm glad that 2021 got to be so good and wacky and silly and that there's just so much more to do next year. Oh my god, there's so many good games coming out. Fingers crossed we get Splatoon 3 new soon. I hope the Kirby game is good. I, I, I don't know, I'll probably end up playing the Sunbreak Monster Hunter Rise thing at some point. Good luck to me, good luck to you. And I'll see ya in 2022! Hey! Pick <laughs> out. Bye bye.